CTAC was mainly started by, I forget his name, in New Brunswick. He was really the force behind it, but ended up that the Louise Binder kind of like took it all over and almost became president for life or until she wanted to go. But that's the other privileged thing because she used to be a lawyer and uh, great pension, so she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. You're limited with the amount you get on welfare. You can't do those traveling. You can't even just energy-wise. I mean, she can get a maid to do her house, and probably does. <laughs> yeah, there, there's always. I've always found some type of elite in the uh, the movement. Even back then, now it's mainly them. I mean, when you talk to leaders, it's like they're getting very healthy salaries, and all we did, everything was there's no pay. Yeah. Because first of all, if you got pay, you wouldn't get your welfare. But there was absolutely no money for activism or for the little guy. And then they started the groups. Basically, started is following the money, which became. A, a problem because the money was associated with services. That's how it changed into services. But even then, we had trouble because the money was dedicated to services. You couldn't. It was by law. You can. Those letters would tell you you cannot use this for uh, activism. So it kind of like changed a bit, and quite a few people got great careers, yeah. and others just got kind of pissed off at the whole thing and went to different areas. I went mainly into the medical because of Caltech. So when uh, CAC, Community Advisory Board of uh, CTN, which now is CIHR CTN, uh, which I started there around 94, but just as a visitor with Caltech. Mm. And those were kind of more uh, it was more rewarding and you'd get a token pay but just for your time and, and you right. get the trips paid for and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not... Uh, it's not a job.